Hello, welcome to another Exchange the Square Theatre podcast. This week's guest is Ray Peacock, and this is quite an extraordinary uh, podcast in lots of ways, as you'll discover. Um, and we thought a little bit about whether to put some of it out and what we should say about this, and these things are all very complicated, but this episode does have um, quite a detailed story about a suicide attempt. So that is, I believe, what is called a trigger warning, though I don't really understand why trigger warnings aren't trigger in themselves. But if you feel that that would be a problem for you, please don't watch this podcast. Uh, although I hope and think that the story should give hope to people, as luckily uh, it, it was a failure. Uh, uh, and, uh, and, you know, I'm glad that Ray Peacock is still alive as much as I would claim otherwise in any other circumstance. But anyway, if that bothers you, please do not download and watch this podcast. Uh, and I hope you will enjoy it. It's very funny and lots of crazy stuff happens. My goodness. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Leicester Square Theatre. A man is shaking his head, looking at me backstage. Will you please welcome Richard Herring? Thank you very much. Lovely to be here. Welcome to Richard Herring's Leicester Square Theatre podcast. Some of the cool kids, though, they love the Indian fans of the show. I started calling it Rahalastapa. And so uh, it's great. Are you back this week? Yeah, hello. He loves it so much. He's come back for two weeks, two weeks in a row. John, I don't know if I, we could. There you are. Look there. How are you doing? Are you having a nice time in England? Yeah. What is your best thing you've seen in uh, England so far? Wow. Uh, uh, the comics. The comics. That's that was good. A good answer. I think. Have you, are you only seeing comedy while you've been here? Or are you going to, have you been to the Tower of London? Go to the Tower of London. It's really good. They have like uh, beef eaters there. But they're not, they don't eat beef. No, they don't. They have, do they have beef eaters? I don't know. Uh, that might be, somewhere they have beef eaters. They're hilarious, whoever they are. Uh, that was my tourist advice. Go to, I'll tell you where you should go. British Museum. It's really good. You can see a lot of the stuff that should be in your country. Uh, so, um, <laughs> but we got it. So, um, <laughs> anyway, to do that. Uh, let's go. I think we'll crack straight on. I was going to talk about uh, Adventures of a Taxi Driver. I'll, I'll briefly talk. It's like a confession. You know the Confessions of the Window Cleaners franchise? So it's like these 1970s, awful, slightly saucy films. Because in the 1970s, if you want to see a picture of a bare lady, it was really difficult. And so the, you know, it was embarrassing to go to a porn film, so you'd go to a kind of ad, a comedy thing and there'd be some naked breasts in it. But it's so... You could re-edit that film, uh, Adventures of a Taxi Driver, take off the kind of quirky music and put on sinister music, and it is the most <laughs> disgusting... <laughs> rapey thing you have ever seen. You know, it's just like placing a bloke turning the camera and go, yeah, she wants it. And then kind of following into a house carrying her, carrying her parcels. And it's this awful. And also everyone, you know, the, the Barry Evans who was in Mind Your Language, one of my favourite uh, sitcoms as a child. Uh, again, you probably would like that one. Uh, it's, it was very popular all around the world. Uh, and uh, he, uh, he died. He, be, he had his career kind of went wrong and then he became an, a mini cab driver in real life. And then he was, it was unclear how he died, but basically some, somehow he got a bad head injury and died at the age of 53. And one of the women he was in a bath with, romping around with in this kind of joyless sex scene, uh, and, and killed herself by drinking uh, bat, uh, drain acid. Uh, so I'd quite like to re-edit uh, Adventures of a Taxi Driver and just kind of put up little things saying, he died in a terrible way. <laughs> she was died, she drank poison and died. And... Uh, Robert Lindsay appeared in 120 episodes of My Family. Is that, that would, it would be, it becomes like a work of art if you do that. It's a, honestly, it's worth looking at just to have an idea of how far we've come in this country and how far we haven't come as well. Yeah, think about it. So my guest today, he's probably, better, it's going to be quite a feminist podcast, I'm guessing. He is probably best known as Billy Taft from Doctors. That is why you're all here. It's Ray Peacock, ladies and gentlemen. Here he comes. Ray Peacock. If, Ray Peacock, if that is your real name. 
Hello, hi, hi. hi. You I'm going to record it. Yeah. Because the last time we did an interview together, you didn't record it. No. <laughs> so, well, we tried. So but I, went, I've, I left my coat on. My coat's on. <laughs> it um, went wrong, and it wasn't George's fault that time because we were in Edinburgh. What was it? Uh, well, not mine. I, mean, I, think, man, I think it was something to do with the stand uh, system. I don't know what I've done. I, I've heard to have done it like an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> I sat down and go, right, go on. I'll, so chat, you to you, I'll chat to you. Go you on. brought your coat on. It's quite warm up here. I'm, I'm, it wasn't I'm out there. I still see my sweat stains from last week. I noticed that in the dressing room, but I didn't mesh it. They were weird. Like They're weird. They've sort of come. This is good, though. This is Mr. Poopy Butthole from um, uh, Rick and Morty. What's going on? Yeah, you should, uh, should watch that if you don't watch, you watch Rick and Morty. Yeah. It's good. So, uh, so Tony's my I'm favourite. Surpri I'm surprised I could switch it off to come here today, <laughs> Richard. He's my favourite sitcom character. What is it? What Mr. Poopy Butthole. It's quite complicated, but it's an episode. Ep Looks it. It's <laughs> <laughs> the sitcoms are basically a bit like Back to the Future. It's an old scientist and a young boy who travel around. And oh, do you know what? Yeah. So genuinely, weirdly, I've just been to Forbidden Planet and um, you know the shop. Yeah. And. Um, <laughs> As have most of our audience. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But well, you were already watching the first one when I was in there. I, I avoided the rush. And I, um, I overheard people talking. Yeah. And I, I, I presume about that, because they yeah. were saying, he was going, oh, it's based on Back to the Future. And, went, and she went, oh, is that why it's a man and the old the doctor and all that stuff? Sort of, yeah. That might be the same Really thing. good. It's all on YouTube. You can look, look at it in bad quality on YouTube. What's, huge, what's a YouTube? Uh, and what's then, uh, <laughs> get into it, it's good. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then in one episode, there's all these, these characters that appear out of nowhere who... It can only exist because you imagine them or whatever, and then they tr become real. And one of them, well, actually, I have, to, I have to give a major spoiler, but in that episode, Mr. Poopy Butthole is uh, one of the characters in the house. And then Is that like a polymorph in Red Dwarf? Uh, maybe, I don't know. I didn't really watch Red Dwarf because, you know, I'm not an idiot. I, so have uh, watch, <laughs> I have to watch it every week. I'm, do doing, I'm, do, I'm working on it at the moment. Oh, yeah, yeah. And um, the other night, and the audience weren't, they weren't great. And um, <laughs> they really weren't. Uh, and, and I was a bit giddy as well because I, even though I've n I'm not allowed to tell anyone, <laughs> right, I've told every, I told a woman on the train today, <laughs> right, I went to Star Wars, they're filming Star Wars, not filming it, they're in pre-production of the next Star Wars there, and they've still got some stuff from the old Star Wars there, um, so I, uh, they were filming Open All Hours next door, and Ve Johnny Vegas is in Open All Hours, yeah. and I've known like Johnny for a long time, and uh, he said, I'll tell, I've, I've, I've befriended I befriended the security guards. Nice. Right, and it, which he, if you know Johnny, he does. He just just does do that. He befriends people. He does. And um, and he just took me down, and we went in. So I've got all the photos on my phone, and it was, I, was, I was just like, "Fuck Red Dwarf." <laughs> like it, 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 that's how I felt about it. So yeah. I might have not been at my best the other night, but um, you'd expect it to be full of fans, and it's not. It wasn't the other night. And halfway through the episode, it was a brilliant episode, really good, but the audience were a bit flat. And um, they asked me to ask the audience what a polymorph is, which is a really famous thing in Red Dwarf, yeah. right? And I said, Does, do you want to know what a polymorph is? Five of them knew. Wow. And it was that moment of going, well, that's why. They, do, they don't even know what this is. <laughs> they just applied for free tickets and they fucking come and ruined it. Yeah. And it's like, and, and it, yeah, it was horrible. Yeah, that horrible. used to happen to do some Fist of Fun quite a lot. We'd just get, we'd get the... Just nobody knew what well, it was. Well, they didn't know what it was. Or, or what it was, was supposed to be. <laughs> we would get... Why this had been commissioned. <laughs> We get the overspill from like some of course, yeah, 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 something yeah. else. Yeah, yeah. Like some lots of lots of middle aged people sitting there, which like, that would now be me, but Yeah. Uh, so you used to get audience from like a successful thing. Yeah. If that had like <laughs> who'd failed to get who'd failed to get into the thing they wanted to get into <laughs> and then came in to see a load of stupid men in a cellar swearing yeah, yeah, yeah. at uh, some man in a dirty And even then about some weeks it was still <laughs> half empty. <laughs> I'm going, no, I don't want to see that. <laughs> don't want to see it. It was. Well, you do a lot of warm-ups. Let's talk about warm-ups, because you've I done... I do less, less now you, than I used well, to. Well, you've, yeah. you've done a lot of shows yeah. in the past. Yeah. You did, we had uh, John Robbins on, who was talking about Deal or No Deal. And no I Robbins. got sacked off that. Yeah, he got sacked off that twice. He was talking about... He went, Fuck he got Robbins! Sacked, How he did he do sacked, that? He got sacked. And How did he do that? We'll have to listen to the podcast to find out. He got <laughs> sacked, and then they forgot, and had him back, and then he got they sacked They forgot? Again. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they wouldn't forget my one. <laughs> What did you do? I don't Can you talk about it? It wasn't even my fault. <laughs> like, it actually wasn't my fault. There were two things. One is I opened a box I wasn't meant to open. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> apparently that cost them thousands in production fees. <laughs> and it, right, the other thing is, I've spoken about this from a stand-up as well, right? You, right, you know if you spent a big chunk of your life shouting cock at the telly when Noel Edmonds is on? <laughs> right. <laughs> and then one day in real life, <laughs> he's just there. <laughs> 
Pavlov's dog, innit? You can't remember. <laughs> and I've not even broke my non-disclosure on that, because I've changed three letters in that story. <laughs> <laughs> Do you know what the reason they gave? The actual reason they gave uh, was they said that I passed, I, that I went through someone's bag in the audience with their knowledge, yeah. and that I got their sandwiches out and passed them around the audience. Right. Right? That is true. I yeah. did do that. But I did that the first show I ever did. It was the first show. Right. And I carried on doing it for like six months afterwards. So they obviously had gone, we need something. <laughs> we need something to get rid of this bloke. And so they went back to show one. Right. And the really annoying thing was I, I, I wanted to quit the night before. And I'd rang my agent, James, and I said, look, I can't do this anymore. I hate it. I don't enjoy the environment. I don't... I, I'm sure, you know, I'm sure it's fine for some people. But for, for me, it felt... Personally, it felt slightly misogynistic in there, is what it felt, and it didn't right. sit well with me. And that I'd be around the back, and the cameramen would be zooming in on girls' boobs, boobs and things like that, you know, and it felt just a bit uncomfortable to me. There weren't, there weren't many girls there, it was a very male environment. Um, so I didn't like it, and I, I told my management, I was like, I don't want to do it, I don't want to be there anymore. And he went, Look, this is the last of the block that you're doing, and when they come in with a new block, we'll just say, You know, he's too busy, or whatever, he can't do it, but you know, yeah. in the future, whatever. He says that a lot, my manager, <laughs> to people, he goes, Well, maybe in the future, he said it to fucking Foo Bar the other day. <laughs> Right, right. He's on the phone to food bar the other day and he, and he said, maybe in six months he'll miss it. <laughs> right, right. I was like, why did you say that? Um, so yeah, and he sacked me the next day. Right. And I was like, I was going to quit. <laughs> uh, but yeah, that was that. Have you left food bar as well? I have left Fubar, yeah. yes, yes, I have left Fubar. I, I don't. You really lasted a long time at Fubar. Not technically, I didn't. Okay. Because I was like, <laughs> I was in and out of there. Right. Because um, it was me and Ed first of all, and then we we stayed when you lot all went. Um, weirdly, because I because I one of the things I was I was saying because a lot of it was to do with John Gaunt, and you were all going, "Oh, John Gaunt's on and all that." Yeah. And I was going, "Well, I think he, you know, if it's going to be a free a free speech, you know, radio station, then you've got to have all that in it as well. You know, it's, it's got to be that. Um, you know, much as I don't like the man or whatever, I think he, you know, he's he's been in his time good at what he does. To be know? fair, I I wasn't pitched the the job as being a free speech radio I was pitched as being a comedy radio right comedy okay radio. okay so when it all started changing into lots of non-comedians coming into it it felt weird that and, didn't and it? then just deliberately kind of controversial yes and then well yes well there was I remember a thing where they wanted us to do I don't even know if you did this it was around Easter time and they wanted to make an Easter show right and it was all they were saying and will you say this I was like no oh, yeah, I think no I don't want to yeah, say those yeah. things you know um, and uh, so, so we didn't do it. But I actually believe in what they're doing. I just couldn't bear it anymore. It was just like, I felt like I was losing it. Because I don't live down here, I don't live in London. So I, I, I felt like I was losing an entire day to this thing that I, I was uh, increasingly not enjoying. Mm -hmm. um, it, yeah, it, it just became hard work. So I don't really have, I, I believe in what they're doing. I think they're at heart nice people, mm -hmm. the people that run it. Um, I think they have naiveties that they don't really know what they're doing. I think they've come in under a tremendous amount of flack. Like the, the whole John Gaunt business, that it took the station to its knees, and and, it, and that it's their fault. You know, it's their fault for pandering to this out of control egomania. It, it is. It's their fault. You know, you, you've got to either slap them down or, or yeah. you know, um, and they didn't. So um, so yeah. So it, it damaged the station potentially irreparably. Right. And I only went back because the, the the head of Fubar rang me up. And said, I've just sat John Gaunt, do you want his show? And I went, fucking yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> Didn't even discuss money. It's like, yes, definitely. And, can we, and his, his show was called No Nonsense with John Gaunt. So I called mine Some Nonsense with Ray Peacock. <laughs> um, people may not be entirely aware of what FUBAR is and who John Gaunt yeah, is. Yeah, yeah, dare say they wouldn't be. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> don't <like> Google it. <laughs> <laughs> have you seen not FUBAR's fine, but don't Google Gaunt. Have you seen the big poster of John Gaunt on the uh, M4? Um, do you know what? I have, and do you know why I have? Why? Because you sent it to me. <laughs> <laughs> That's why you sent it to me on my phone. And I was like, I don't want to know. I just don't want to know. Yeah, I, I think somebody gave him that, didn't they? Some yeah. He's a very interesting man. I'm, you know, let's not talk about him again. I had to cut loads of stuff out again last time I talked about him. Anyway, let's move on. So what you are, they, are, what are, what are they chatting about? What are they chatting about? They're just, they've had a couple of drinks. They're very, they're very excited about... Um, What's up? They're just very excited about... Pointing out of bosoms. Yeah. Oh, it's a badge. Sorry, yeah. I apologise. Sorry. She's got a very I unusual can't. nipple. That's the badge awesome. is on the bosom. <laughs> um, I can't see for the lights. What does the badge say? What does it say? <laughs> Fucking ace your fans, aren't they? <laughs> <laughs> I've paid a pound, so I will talk all the way through it. If I want to, I am technically an executive producer. That's brilliant, by the way. That is a brilliant idea. <laughs> Makes them feel like they're relevant. 
<laughs> there are two attractive women on the front row of this audience. Don't spoil it for these blokes who have never... <laughs> they can't believe what's happening. can't believe what's happened today. You are 42 years old. Thanks. He's still doing podcasts and stuff. Grow up. <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe you're 42. Really? Yeah. How old did you think I was? I thought you were about 25 or something. Just Why? Lived, a, lived a terrible life. I thought you were. <laughs> I thought you were still in your. I don't know. Just because I, I'm, I've forgotten how old I am is part of the problem. Well, you, so. just, you just count back from that Edinburgh show where, <laughs> where you said you were 40. It's like so. I did that. Oh, fuck, I'm 40. <laughs> One, two, three, four. Um, yeah, 42. Yes, yeah, it's kind of, yeah, it's good though, isn't it, to be still. A childish idiot. Uh, but I don't think that go will, will that go? I don't think that will go, will it? I don't know. I think it might. I think the problem is I think some people pretend to be it. Yeah. And only like true. I don't know what the political correct <laughs> word is. But <laughs> yeah, only but only true, truly childish people yeah. know that. You know, some people do it for career reasons, or they'll do it, you know, to present a certain persona. Yeah. Um, and I, I, I would imagine, I would certainly hope so. Anyway, I would, uh, that it just doesn't go away. That yeah. it doesn't matter how old you are. I'm not, I'm not bogged down in age at all. No. Although I've been going through a period recently of saying I'm 24 for no reason, <laughs> just saying it to everyone. I'm only 24, and you say it with real authority, yeah. and just see if people believe you or not. Yeah. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. Well, you like me, you've kept your hair, and yeah. that is that you can get away with it. No, I've not kept all of it. I left some of it. Have you? Tony and guys. Did that alienate the plebs? <laughs> 50 pounds for that haircut. Uh, <laughs> no, it wasn't because I, I moved out not long ago and I went to the Tony and guys nearby and they tell me I get 25% off because I'm a new customer. Yeah. So I'm just going to keep moving. Because <laughs> you travel around the country, you just keep going, I've just moved in nearby. And if they've all got that offer. Yeah. Good thinking. Yeah, thanks, mate. Still quite expensive, though, isn't it? It is, yeah. Uh, for, for this, yes. According to uh, Wikipedia, you got married this summer. Oh, really? Is that yeah. right? Yeah. Um, I've got no comment on in, that. In Cumbria. Whereabouts in Cumbria? Um, I, I want to say Ambleside. Was it Ambleside? I've read that, yeah. yeah. I've read that. I've been to Ambleside. Yeah. Do you know Eddie Joe Mur Murray? Your Eddie? Wife? Yeah. <laughs> Eddie? Is that one of Eddie? You, you think my, <laughs> <laughs> my female partner is called Eddie? <laughs> Eddie. How many D's are there in it, Richard? There's one. Eddie. I'd go with Edie on that then, uh, would Eddie. you? <laughs> 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 Fucking hell, Oxford. Yeah, Oxford all the way, this lad. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Edie, I do know Eddie yeah. Joe Murray. I'm aware of it, yeah. Yeah. Okay. I got, I got. <laughs> I've got, yeah, you'd have a wedding ring if you were married. Fuck it, look at Columbo over here. <laughs> <laughs> you're brilliant. <laughs> oh, but you could have taken it off. Because you're divorced. You could have so got married. Got, well, when divorced. was it? This summer I got married. Yeah. Well, yeah. And I'm divorced already. Could be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If she's got any sense. <laughs> That's one of the things with her, she hasn't. <laughs> um, but in a very endearing way. Uh, I, I don't know. No. I don't know. Okay. You don't know if you got married. Well, I, I do know if I got married or not. Okay. <laughs> but I don't know if it's relevant. <laughs> I don't. Right. I'll tell you the absolute truth. Yeah. But I don't. I don't want to ruin the game. Okay. Is that it's 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 being suggested in certain quarters that yeah. I have been okay. that I've got married, and it's being suggested in other quarters that I've not. You know, we talk about being childish. <laughs> right. This is how I filled the last six months. Right. <laughs> I didn't put that on Wikipedia then. Right. But she did. Okay. Yeah. So, yeah, it's, uh, it, it's up in the air about whether we're actually married or not. Wow. But I'm not the marrying kind. No, that's what I thought. Yeah, but isn't that weird? But, you know, I... I, I mean, it's a stupid mystery, isn't it? It's like, people are like, look at the shit if you marry me. Like, I'm aware we're, of that, but it's fun just for, amazed. It's fun for married. me to have, like, ex-girlfriends text you out the blue and go, you, but you wouldn't marry me. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> you might get married. I, I, was, I was, what was I, 46 or 45 when I got married? I can't remember. No count from the show. <laughs> yeah, forty-five maybe. Were, were you gonna get married? Were you ever gonna get married though? Was it a thing for you? Um, I think when I was, I assumed I would get married when I was young, and I assumed I'd have a family when I was younger. Yeah. And then, but then once I got to be a, an adult, I didn't and, and knew what that entailed. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't really want to. I don't think for a long time. And then I met my wife, and then you know, eventually she wore me down. <laughs> yeah, that's. Uh, <laughs> but it's whether or not would 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 true love actually want to wear you down? <laughs> no, I'm I not. No, I know, but I know your your missus and that, and I know that's a real thing. And I, know, I know she exists. 
<laughs> and, uh, no, but you know, I think it's interesting when you think about that, when you think about how your attitude changes to that sort of thing. But I'm, I don't, I'm not sure my attitude has changed to it. No. I, do, I do think it's a, now, I did, a completely pointless thing. I mean, yeah, I, well, I did think that, you see, and I, and I, but then having met my wife, I did. Okay, fair enough. I, I, what I'd say is, if I'm not, if I'm not married now, yeah, if I'm not, if you're not. Um, I'd say this one is the most likely. Okay. Well, that's nice. Is what I'd say. She said to me last night, would you have a tattoo of my name? And I said, yes. And she said, that's all I need to know. <laughs> and then I did it. And she was like, what the fuck have you done? <laughs> I didn't do it. But yeah. It'd be yeah, nice to have a little uh, baby to run around with, wouldn't no, it? No, that would be hideous. A little version, no, baby no, version. No, no, of your all. face, no, a little baby. We're, no, we're both quite seriously mentally ill. <laughs> and, um, and, and those two things going together would make a proper mega mental. Okay. Um, and that it wouldn't be fair on that child. We, we agree on that. We okay. absolutely agree on that. That no matter how broody we got, and I don't at all, but remember, is that we're both too, too head fucked to, to make a proper head fucked baby. Right. Genuinely true. Yeah, well. Not funny, but true. Yeah, I'm not sure it necessarily would work that way. I mean, it, I suppose genetically. It, of course it would. Yeah. Why are you saying we're putting it on? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah it, it's a real, it's a real thing. I know, it, but it, it, doesn't, you. it doesn't necessarily. It's in the genes. So yeah, but it doesn't necessarily uh, follow through. I mean, it, it's a, fi it's a fine choice. Okay, thank you. There's too many people in the world, but babies are really cute, cute though. Like <laughs> I thought you were going to say, but babies are really small. Yeah, they are small. <laughs> <laughs> they don't take I mean, how much room, room is yeah, that yeah, going to yeah, take yeah. up? I mean, look, that's my knowledge. Babies are really they're small. small. <laughs> I know they're, they're bit, small a bit to begin with. They're nice. Yeah. And you'd be, I just think you'd be, you know, you'd be, a, you're kind of fun. You'd be a fun dad. I'd be an awful dad. I've got loads of toys in my house. I know. That's why it'd be fun. Like, no, because no, because I would be saying you can't touch them. <laughs> you can't get away from that weird thing when you're pointing at toys and saying that is not a toy, <laughs> and it's like it is a toy. Um, so children would gravitate towards that. No, yeah. no, not at all. That okay. Obi-Wan Kenobi figure staying as it is. <laughs> <laughs> Arrived last Friday. Hot toys, Obi-Wan Kenobi. <laughs> Never thought I'd be sexually aroused by Alec Guinness. It was like, <laughs> it's perfect, Richard. Me. Yeah. That's normally where you go, let's have an emergency question. <laughs> <laughs> Let us have an emergency question. <laughs> I, could ask, I think I've already asked you about the Muppets before, because you are a fan of the Muppets, so I won't ask you that one. I have my two obsessions are Muppets and Star Wars. Yeah. They're my two in tandem ones that have been long-term obsessions. If you could do put the Muppet version of Star Wars, would you watch it? And who would be... What? What? <laughs> they, they, you know, they do the Muppet Christmas Carol, they could do the Muppets Star, Star Wars. Wars. Okay, yeah, yeah. Who would be um, Han Solo? They've done they? that already. It's okay. actually been done. Not not as a show, but they've got figures and stuff of them already. Oh, oh, but I, I think the present Muppets are a blasphemy to humanity. <laughs> I think yeah, often when I'm watching the present Muppets, I can't hear a lot of it for Jim Henson spinning in his grave. <laughs> it's like, I, I think it's disgusting what they've done with the Muppets. Yeah, I, I, get, I get genuinely angry about it. The films or the, se or the TV series? Uh, all of it. Uh, any, anything from the, the, the film, the reboot film onwards. Yeah. Like everyone's going on going, oh, it's brilliant, the reboot film. It was dog shit. It was awful, that film. For so many reasons, really, as a Muppet fan, yeah. so many reasons. There was a, the main reason with that was, I'll tell you what, what it did wrong, more than anything else, and I apologise for the language, but it's relevant, is that film, the one that, you know, the big one that came out, they succeeded in making Kermit a cunt. <laughs> and uh, and that, that shouldn't ever be a thing in the Muppets. Yeah. Kermit would never have turned his back on the Muppets. And the premise of that film was that Kermit was living on his own in a big mansion and all the Muppets, someone was sleeping on the streets, wouldn't have happened. Wouldn't have happened. It's an, it, it's an incorrect, I, I genuinely believe, I'm angry about it. Uh, it, it won't, it's a, but the, the problem with it is, but you can sort of laugh it off and stuff, but it's a legacy. <laughs> no, it's a legacy. It's an important thing. It's how people felt about Phantom Menace. We saw yeah. people got properly angry. It's all make, make believe, and it's his story to do what he wants with it. But with the Muppets, it's not their story to do it because the man who created the Muppets isn't around anymore, and mm -hmm. most of the performers aren't around anymore. So you know they really, they really are sort of holding gold there, and they're you know they're treating it like shit. I do believe that. Mm -hmm. I really do. So disappointed in what's happened with the Muppets. So I, I started saying that it's Jim. I, I like Jim Henson's Muppets. Right. And that's it. Not Disney Muppets. Yeah. Nothing against Disney particularly, but just, you know. Well, it's very, you know, it's very, it's 40, 42 years old. It's very, <laughs> it's very important. <laughs> Talking of puppets, if you had to go for a week's holiday with one of the puppets from Spitting Image, which of the puppets from Spitting Image would you choose? Bear in mind yeah. that the puppet would choose the destination that you were going to. Bear in mind also that you would be going on holiday with a puppet 
the puppeteer and the voice artist, <laughs> but you would never be able to talk to them as themselves. They would always <laughs> remain in character. <laughs> yeah. And then you'd be on holiday for a week with one of the spitting image puppets. Which one would it be? <laughs> I'm more interested yeah. in finding out how you arrived at that. <laughs> I'm, I'm more interested in what day it was, where you were, how happy you were with the question <laughs> when you thought, I'm going to have that. I'm going to have that as a question. I'm very happy with the question. I can't remember. Andy McCaitch likes this question. Can you remember where it came from? No. Did he come up with it in a show? No, I don't think I did. I think I wrote it in my book and, and then I've drawn it. Well, I drew a circle around it because Andy McH likes it. And I, forgot okay. I forgot to do it. And, you um, know, and Andy McH is very much my sounding board of a, of a rehearsed person. Okay, got you, got you, got you. Audience member. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I, I like Chris Barry. Yeah. Because I, I work with Chris, so yeah. I like Chris and he's a nice man. You wouldn't be able to talk to Chris Barry as himself. That's he would fun. be in character. But would he have to maintain the personality of the character yeah. as well? Well, he'd be, uh, he'd be, well, I presume he'd be sitting... I'll take Thatcher then. <laughs> with I, Steve, I wouldn't be responsible with for With Steve Nallen. Yeah, yeah. I'd like to shout in her face. Yeah. I'd enjoy that. So that. Would if you, that's the nearest I can get to Thatcher, which it obviously is. To really. shout in her face, did you say? Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> would you enjoy... Coogan, Coogan was in there, wasn't he? Coogan d might have done... Coogan was on Spinovich. Yeah, he was, yeah, yeah. He was, so one, yeah. of, one of Coogan's ones. Well, which one? I, lo I adore Steve Coogan, and because even more now, because I read his autobiography, cover yeah. to cover, in about four hours. Right. Like, I don't mean it's, like, thin. I mean, like, I, I ploughed through <laughs> it. I was loving it, and honestly, it was like, I was enjoying it a lot anyway. Yeah. And then it got to the moment about saying about that you came up with <laughs> Alan Partridge. <laughs> And it just says, let me be clear. <laughs> <laughs> they did not. <laughs> and I was that far off texting you at four in the morning, <laughs> just with a photo of it, <laughs> highlighted. We didn't, he's correct. I know, I know. <laughs> I thought about, I don't know if I might have, uh, sorry, I forget week by week what I was talking about, but it was his birthday party recently. I went to his birthday party and I was thinking, what do you get, what do you get Steve Coogan as, for a birthday present? I s and I was going to just write him a card saying, I hereby withdraw all rights to... <laughs> <laughs> in a frame, that'd be lovely, yeah. yeah, that'd be really nice. But then I thought, I don't know. <laughs> what, what if somewhere down the line, some clever lawyer... Yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> then, yeah. then he gets that out, and then I've lost, you know... I'd have just got him his own book. <laughs> <laughs> there he goes, only £9.98. <laughs> in Sainsbury's, why 98 I don't know, but it was. I'll tell you what you should also do as well, if you've, yeah. not, if you've not done it already. Because at the time that we're recording this, you, you've got your uh, Kickstarter thing. Is it Kickstarter crowd yeah. or whatever? For your stupid snooker thing. No, snooker thing. It's getting very close to the... Uh... Mate, like, genuinely, genuinely, we should do this. You've got, like, what, four days left? Yeah. Honestly, my missus or girlfriend, whatever you want to call her, <laughs> right, um, is so good at Photoshop, like, so good at it. And we should do a homepage that says you've reached the amount yeah. And you should tweet it. <laughs> just tweet it out and go, this is just like this is unbelievable. And so many people be going, I've not got 60 grand! Oh my god! It, it would shit up so many people. Unfortunately, I think they're all in this room. So, uh... <laughs> right, well you're all sworn to see <laughs> The thing That's is a good it's point. not you've thought of that, yeah. People, fucking all them, aren't they? Yeah, yeah. People can uh, withdraw their the problem with it, people can withdraw their pledge at any time. That makes it. But can they withdraw their pledge after it's completed? I think so. Surely you, not. Andy McH put in five grand and then his credit card company got in touch with him. Yeah. This happened to someone else. The fraud, the fraud department got in touch with him to say, what is this, why have you... And they haven't even taken the that's money. Amazing. That's amazing. That's, you know, they, they pledge the money against the thing. You only get the money on Kickstarter if you make the whole total. So that's, that's the joke yeah. uh, of what I'm doing. <laughs> uh, so, you know, th it's, weird. it's on 60,000 at the moment. There's 940,000 to go. But that's mental go. anyway. Yeah, it, it, that is that, mental. Yeah, that's and like, I think about 30,000 of that is, gen you know, is genuine... It's not. It is. The, it's not. There's it's loads not. of people no, Rich, pledging not. twenty. No, Why no, would you pledge nobody's twenty? Nobody's going to put money towards <laughs> enforcing and encouraging your latent schizophrenia. It's not yeah. going to. It's not going to be a thing where they're going to go. Let's let's make him do it more. <laughs> I think. Be, I think some of the five thousand people will will pay you their five thousand pounds if it came to. That. But the I problem is, you can be that. What? What's the point of that? If you can withdraw your. It would be exciting if it, if you put five thousand in and then it suddenly started building and you'd be going. Oh my God! I'm going to lose everything and be cast out of my house, and just because yeah, of Richard Herring, and hit, then I'll be sitting there laughing with all the money. Yeah, but but I don't know if you know this, but they didn't set up that site so you could do a joke on it. <laughs> it was like, <laughs> like, like 
that site does operate in that way for real things. So that's what the floor is with that. Well, well, what's the point in having a site where you can pretend you're raising money? <laughs> it's like, no, that's not what it is. You are raising money on that site. And, but people think it won't hit the target. So if they think it has hit the target, maybe yeah. they'll... Yeah, okay, well, we could give it a go. I'm up for, I think it'd be okay. hilarious. hilarious. What I quite like is you get, I get spam email things from people like through Kickstarter who are pretending that they're writing to me individually and like going, oh, I see you're doing really well. You've got uh, 200 people. So uh, let me help you, know, let me help you market this oh, or whatever. Right, oh, right, okay. But you're kind of going, yeah, you must be excited. You've got 200 people. Who've, who've, who've but could you, not say, could you not say to them, okay, well, what I'll do then is I'll give you 20% of it <laughs> if you market it yeah, for me. And then they'll go, well, he's already got 60 grand. <laughs> and then they'll go market it. But, it I, but I, bet they would, I bet they wouldn't do it that way. I bet they'd make me pay to market it. Oh, from? It. Yeah. Okay. That's just human nature. Isn't it? Sad, isn't it? Why do elephants have such low rates of cancer? <laughs> Age old question. Isn't it, right? it's <laughs> like, I, don't, I don't know. It's probably something to do with biology. It is partly to do with that, yeah. Do you know? Yeah. Oh, why? Okay. Um, they don't smoke. That is one of the reasons. <laughs> they, uh, I was going to say they're thick skinned, but I don't know. That <laughs> As if people get cancer by osmosis. <laughs> Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm interested. Well, it's because... Um, I mean, you know, because a lot of elephants will die of other causes. I think that would be a part of the thing. So oh, they don't live with human beings, together. they live a long time and then so they get cancers. Don't but it's actually... Live, like to 100 or something like that. Yeah, they, that don't is they? true. I said that with authority. I've got no clue. Uh, Did uh, they? Yeah, they? Some men went yes and they didn't know that one of the people in the... One of the princes in the tower is probably called Richard. I forgot to check. Uh, so uh, it's because they have 20 TP53 gene alarms to the humans ones. They're like the smoke detectors of the gene world. That makes sense, doesn't yeah. it? <laughs> Can you name another animal that is cancer resistant? <laughs> <laughs> you fucking bella. <laughs> It's amazing, because I see a little glimmer in your eye. <laughs> I'm going to ask him if he knows another one. <laughs> uh, leopard. What? Shark. Shark. Nice. Shark. Good, good call. No. So you, you've said enough. No. Uh, it is, it is tortoise. Toy toys. No. It is the naked mole rat. The naked mole rat. Yeah. Okay. What, uh, what, same reason. Same reason. I don't know. <laughs> uh, now, you do a, a podcast about ghosts. Yes, yes, I do. This yes. is only the yes. parapod, is that what it's called? The parapod, yeah. 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 Um, I, I'm quite obsessed with ghosts, and you are a skeptic, I would say, from the podcast. Well, yeah, I, I don't even like that word, because that yeah. word implies that it's like, it's still, it still <laughs> might be in doubt. It's yeah. like, I'm, I'm not like, hmm, I'm like, no. It's not like. But have you ever seen a ghost, though? <laughs> <laughs> the answer to that question may surprise you. Right, okay. Um, in that, I, I have seen, so, well, two things. When does this go out? Uh, February, I think. Fine. So, uh, me and Barry Dodds, who I do the Parapod with, who believes in them, like, yeah, he un does. unquestioned, he, like, he proper believes in it. We went to a quote-unquote haunted house last week. Yeah. Um, which is in... It's the one that Most Haunted went to recently. It's 30 East Drive in Pontefract in Yorkshire. And, uh, and, um, and it was weird. Like, it was weird. And it's all there on the recording. Right. And things moved and stuff happened. And I had... He's not clever enough to do that. <laughs> like, 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 you know, clandestine, you know? Yeah. Um, there, was, there was one point where I, I said, I don't believe there's not another person in this house. Living person. Yeah. Because I arrived after him. He was there first. So everything logic in my head was going, I don't believe there's not another person in this house. I've not looked in the wardrobes. I've not looked in the loft. I've not, you know, I've been around the house, but I've not seen everywhere, under the beds and all the rest of it. And I went up and did that, and there was no one there. And then it was like, I don't know how to explain it. The, the, we're doing two specials at Christmas, which will have been out now when you listen to this. Um, and the first one still scares me listening to it. And it's quite weird that, listening to something that... It's supposed to be a comedy podcast, and you're like, this is fucking terrifying. <laughs> um, and it's only the audio as well, which I think makes you do more work when you're listening to it. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it was, a, uh, it was an interesting experience, that. And I've got to go back again in February. I've got to go again. I mean, the ghosts will not like you as well, because you don't believe in them. They'll be angry. So I, I angry felt... No, well, no, this is the thing. I felt like the ghost, if there was one, did like me. I felt like it did. Right. But it thought, that's a man after my own heart, that. Right, because yeah. if I was alive, I wouldn't believe in ghosts. That's no, no, but like, but like, he's a proper troublemaker, and I like that. Okay, he wants to push Barry through the window as well. I like, <laughs> I like, I like that. I like that. 
Um, well, that was my argument with Most Haunted, because Most Haunted went in there, and uh, they did a live Most Haunted from there. And, uh, and it, it, it like, genuinely ludicrous. Like, ludicrous what they were doing in there. And it was all... And they're not good enough actors. That's the thing with it, is they're not good enough actors to carry it off. Some of them do it quite well. But otherwise, the bald bloke... Yeah. Who's in in Most Haunted? I don't know what his name is. He might never have seen it, but there's a weird bald bo- bloke. Looks like Uncle Vester, and he he just does look like that. And um, there was a bit where they were trying to provoke. It's called Fred the Ghost. Not his real name, but he answers to it. <laughs> and uh, um, and they were saying they were saying do something, Fred. You know, do you know, do. I don't think they were even saying Fred at the time. They were saying do something to Carl, do something to whoever, do something to whoever, and nothing was happening. And the bald bloke just suddenly goes. Do something evil to me, <laughs> and it's like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, it's, it's like, and I, it makes me wonder. I go, if, if he's like a genuine special, they shouldn't be taking him in. Like, if, if, no, if they're tech, if he's a real one, that's not funny. Like, if they're taking him round, I don't know if he is or not. But it, it was a moment of like, oh, are they taking advantage of this man? Like, um, they were doing ridiculous things in there on the live one, and, I, and Barry said to me, even Barry was saying, this is stupid. And I said, well, I said, well, here's the thing, though, Barry, is you believe there's a ghost in that house. There's a monk from years and years back. He did abhorrent things to children. He was buried in a well underneath the house. That's the story behind it. And I said, so you're saying to me that on the night that Most Haunted were in there, when there was shitloads of plugs and power and stuff, and he always says to me, they feed on power. <laughs> they feed on... It's like there's big lights and stuff. You know, it should be as most potent. You're telling me that on the night that Most Haunted did and faked it, that ghost paused its haunting. <laughs> but that ghost went, nah, I won't do it tonight. <laughs> like, you'd be, you'd fuck, you'd be chucking them off the walls. Do you know what I mean? So it's yeah. like, why would it pause its haunting? And that, for me, was, a, was further confirmation in what I believe, that it's just not real. But ghosts depend on the ambiguity of whether they exist or not. If one appeared, that would ruin it, because then we would know they were definitely real. And they live in the in I the wish you could see your stupid face <laughs> at the moment. Like, just quite how pleased with yourself you are. Over, over an argument you've not even thought through yourself yet. Go, no, but I think you'll find... Go, they, they don't. You, you know They live well in a hinterland, and they need that. So they need yeah. you to... They need to have the... There's they need you to doubt it. Well, they need to not be... If, they, if it's true, it's like God, and if God comes down and goes, yep, here I am, what yeah. are you going to do about it? That right. ruins it, doesn't it? Ruins they, what? Ruins, what does it ruin? Or religion, because A, it's about faith, but B, it means everyone goes, oh, I was wrong. It's a different, it's a different God than I thought But do you was. not think that if there, were, if there was one omnipresent God, which yeah. I also don't believe, but if there was, yeah. regardless of which religion that is the one that, the, oh, it might be a, a new one yeah. that no one's thought of yet. But if there is one... Uh, dot, it's, um, <coughs> don't it's, try to think of one. It's a stone. It's it's the, a yeah, stone. The, the stone religion, that's right, Richard. And... <laughs> That, 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 that God could yeah. just go, can you stop doing this? Yeah. Look, I am, I'm it, I'm it, all right? <laughs> it's me, all right? G- carry on. I don't give a shit what you do, really, but don't fight in other mystery ones named. You know, yeah. th- surely you would if you had that power, yeah, surely. Yeah, he's j- just God's a cunt, definitely. <laughs> that just, that's all that proves. Like Kermit. <laughs> yes, yep. yes, yep. the new Kermit. The new Kermit. Um, well, I think, like, with the, with the uh, ISIS or D- Dash or whatever we're meant to call them now, um, Dash? Da- Daesh, you meant to call them. Okay. Because uh, that means that's insulting to them, whereas calling them it's Islamic. It's a good state. week for this, Richard! <laughs> <laughs> it's going out in the future and they won't have done anything in, in the interim. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah you can they'll do that. Be def- they'll be definitely wiped out by now. That is, <laughs> President Obama promised me, so I believe him. Um, what was I going to say? Well, if I was uh, the god of ISIS, right? I, I would. I would know. If of I was all in the ISIS, weeks I agreed go, to do this. I, yeah, I would go. Why? Why? Why is all the people who don't believe in my god live in a much nicer place than I'm living in? Right. That's what. If I my god's the real one, yeah. why didn't we win the Crusades? And why? And why do we live? In the middle of a horrible desert with nothing around and no, no iPads and stuff. What are you looking at me like that? <laughs> like, oh, he's having to go at ISIS now. <laughs> and, uh, what I'm saying is their God's not all that good, is it? Compared to our God that's given us less square Do you want me here. to quote back to you what you've just said? <laughs> I do. <laughs> um, well, I So, you know, he's, no, if he is their God, he doesn't like them very much, does he? They'll get blown up and stuff. Horrific as it would be, yeah. it would be amazing to use... I mean, not the very bad ones, but it would be amazing to have, like, one of the ISIS propaganda videos 
You know, when they, I don't mean when they're doing horrible things. I mean when they're just showing the camps and all that sort of thing. And then just do it, like, do it like the CGI. Just have you wandering around the back and going, well, why is our God not doing things? <laughs> like this little randomised man, but it's you. Yeah. <laughs> that fucking, I'd, I'd be up for doing that. You could probably do that as well. Yeah. I don't want to get... You'll film it. Don't want to get into trouble. No, no. Just say it publicly in the middle of London. <laughs> Do you think having sex with a ghost would count as cheating? <laughs> if you were in a relationship with someone else and you had sex with a ghost? Uh, uh, shall I pretend that I believe in ghosts for this question? Yeah. Um, uh, yes, 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 it would, yes, of course it would. What if the ghost is... You wake up and the ghost is having sex with you already? And you have been raped by a ghost. I don't think a ghost is ethically there's, there's, there's morally there's able a, to... No, there, uh, whoa, there is a history of that. Uh, there is. Amongst people who believe in all that sort of thing. Um, in fact, what was that film? Uh, I forget what the film was called, but it's based on a real story. Ghost. No, not Ghost. <laughs> Are we going to go Ghostbusters? Was it Ghostbusters? Um, I can't remember the name of the film. The Entity, I think it was called. And it was based on uh, a lady called Doris Biver. What's yeah. her name? Uh, and she, we actually covered her in the Parapod, br very briefly, because I didn't, I didn't want to tell the full story of it, because I didn't want to ruin our podcast, but I'll ruin yours. <laughs> well, uh, uh, she claimed to have been raped by ghosts. That, yeah. was, that was part of it. But, but Doris Bither was... Um, and we, so we didn't talk about that on the... We said you can go and Google it or find out stuff about it. Um, and she claimed she was raped by ghosts. And, uh, and, uh, but from all accounts, a very tragic figure, Doris Bither. You know, and, and was sort of... As is often the case with ghost stories, and the same with, like, uh, the Enfield haunting and stuff like that, is I always think there's, a, there's usually someone at the centre of it if you look very closely, you can see there's somebody involved in the story and you go, well, what are you benefiting from all this? You know, and yet you're the loudest and you're the one who, you know, there's often someone who I, who I feel is steering the ship. And the Doris Bither thing, she was, uh, it was it, you know, they had photos of her with like marks over her head and all this, so there were just problems on the film, but, um, and people saying, no, this is real and Kodak have looked at it and they've said there's nothing wrong with it and all this sort of business going on. And, but what they never mentioned was she was an alcoholic. She was, she'd been destitute for a long time. Um, you know, she was making some money out of it at that time, but a pittance compared to what people around her were making. And, um, and, and that in every occurrence of them supposedly filming a live thing happening to her, she was like three sheets to the wind. She was proper drunk and that, but they keep it quiet that she was in a bad way. So I think there's, there's a genuine like malevolent side to, to that, to the, to the mythology of ghosts. And uh, so according to her, you could be raped by a ghost. What if you woke up oh, and the, the no. ghost you try, was... The you ghost try and have a conversation. <laughs> the, ghost, Wait, go the ghost is already having sex with you. You haven't consented. Is that but, sex, is yeah. it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, the, you haven't consented, <laughs> but having woken up, you find you don't mind. I mean, <laughs> fuck me. Now, <laughs> now use that argument in real life. It's a ghost. Yeah, now use that argument in court. <laughs> it's a ghost. Over a real occurrence. <laughs> and see what people... Fucking feminist herring over here. Well, what if you start enjoying it halfway through? It is. Let's not go there. The Richard. ghost is a woman. You didn't think that through. Oh, the ghost. So, I yeah. see. All oh, right, OK. So the ghost's having sex and you go, actually, I don't know. Well, that mind. happens in Ghostbusters, yeah, doesn't exactly. it? It does happen yeah. in Ghostbusters. So... Dan Aykroyd wakes up and he's... And it happened to me. It happened to me. That's why I'm putting it there. There was a hag old woman trying to strangle me, but it's the start... That's the that's sex start. Do you know what? Somebody trying to, to strangle you is a start. I agree, I agree with that. But I'm in is a room. Right? I'm, I'm, I'm sorry, are we talking too loud for your conversation? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that, but, but I was speaking too much already. You've got a bad voice. You should, you should be quiet. Because you should, you should, yeah, you rest that. Why is she being so aggressive? You told me to stop talking earlier. Because there's a show on. <laughs> <laughs> and look, how awful of me to say be quiet. Well, there's people, there's like 200 people around you. Ah, fuck it, there's audio. 500 people <laughs> around you who've all paid to get in as well, but all they can hear, the people around you, all they can hear is you talking. <laughs> Be a man about this. Answer truthfully, answer truthfully. Is she getting on your tits? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. I'm <laughs> <laughs> Why is it always me? <laughs> fucking hell. You wait till you see the ratings for this fucker. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm listening. Slam you? See what you've got them in the reds now. 
what's being what's offensive? You think I'm speaking in an offensive manner about women generally? What? No, what, what bit? What bit? When? <laughs> I, don't, I don't think he has. What bit? No, quote back to me. Well, yeah, we will. Qu- quote it back to me, what I said. It's good that you're keeping control of this, by the way. <laughs> well, I'm, honestly, I, th- I think he wants his badge back. <laughs> what have I said offensive about women? What have I said offensive about women? I don't... No, answer that question. <laughs> what have I said offensive about women? Well, earlier you did, you did, you, you made a little comment. You like, you've spoken it up. You didn't even look at me. You were like, uh, oh, whoa! So you think because I told you to be quiet? <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa! Isn't this amazing? Can someone tell Hal Crutton and his show's cancelled? <laughs> um, you, so, so, so you think because you're a woman and I said wow. don't, don't talk when, pe- when there's a show on that I was being offensive about women? I have to say, I think she's right. (laughs) (laughs) I think maybe he's... he's Tell tell me honestly right now. (laughs) Tell me honestly right now, before I continue this. Have you moved into the You've Been... Like, like, sort of... (laughs) The Hidden Camera podcast. That, like, before I got it, it was like, so you say this, right? And then you say this. (laughs) I've I've not said... I've I've not said anything about it. So you're angry because I've not said if I'm married or not? <laughs> well, because you said, I'm not your wife, I wouldn't be angry. <laughs> All I thought was then, but then if I wasn't married, she could be. So yes, I am. Yes, very, very married. Very, very married. Um, I don't, I, you've still not answered what, what I said offence. I'm, I'm genuinely interested to know, because I had, I had a row at a gig last I'm, night. Yeah. And I'm... I'm <laughs> I did, I did. I'll show you it on my phone. I filmed the woman leaving, okay. right? Uh, it was unbelievable. Unbelievable. Don't worry, we're not going to leave. What would we have to do to make you leave? <laughs> no, it's not, but no, I'm not, I'm not, I don't think I've said anything offensive. I, I mean, I, like, I, I don't, I'm not turning the... Have, I think have I've I? said quite a lot of offensive things that I'd quite like to take back. What did I say? I, uh, I have... I, I want to know what it was. I think I if anything, you've calmed me down a bit. I think you've, you've been... When I've said something bad, you've told me off. That seems to be what's happened so far. Now, be confident in your argument, because we are <laughs> filming and recording it. So we can, we can go back. Of what? Okay this is all because I told you to be quiet because you were talking, isn't it? That's all this is about. Wow, OK. Is that all it's about, really? Same. <laughs> and you've not enjoyed it? Okay, that's fine. So, so you came here wanting to enjoy the experience of, and you, because you haven't enjoyed it. So, okay, that's fine. Um, don't make it, he's here though, so don't make it. Um, and because you've not enjoyed it, you thought, I'm gonna shout and scream and talk all the way through it. You talked all the way through it though. That's true. No, you did. Say again. Thank you. And she's closer to you than me. No, I, I've, I've got, honestly, I've got, do you know who I blame? Genuinely, fucking Simon Cowell. Really? I, I genuinely do, is that that, my heart sinks with that. Yeah. Like, it, re- it genuinely does, because it's that thing of, like, um, that Cowell's cultivated a society of that. Of people sat going, I don't like this, fuck off! <laughs> like, you know, like, genuinely, do you know what I mean? So it's the, that, that sort of thing and that sort of behaviour. Do you have children, by the way? If your children behaved how you'd behaved here tonight, would you bollock them? No. You fucking should. You absolutely <laughs> should. You should. Your behaviour's appalling. Your behaviour's appalling. And this is... So this Look, is in a way, we've all done... They've talked. You've been sexy. I've been talking! <laughs> <laughs> you've, been, you've been very sexy. I've st- sat here and I've uh, hardly said anything offensive it's to not. anyone. It's, and not. I, it's been... You know, it's... I've but in, but in, in, in real between. life... Yeah. Like, in real life... I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> it is real life. That is true. Have you got your have you got a list of your guests on the show today? <laughs> Were they in it? <laughs> no, they're not in my um, list. in real life, it genuinely it, it makes me both angry and, and despairing. It, yeah. re- it really does. It really the behaviour of audiences. 
And it's always minorities. They're normally drunk. Um, and, and it's... It, I, I say that right now. It, I, I despair of it. I mean, it's normally a small part of the audience. <laughs> that's what I mean by minorities. I don't mean, it's always the blacks, isn't it? I'm not, that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying, in, amongst a lot of people, it's always small minorities who ruin the show for everybody else. That's what, that's what the issue is here, right? Now, the only reason he's keeping quiet is because you bought his fucking badge. That's the, that's the only reason. That's the only reason. We've seen him talking to that bus driver on YouTube. We, we know what he's capable of in these situations. But he's quite happy to wind me up and let me go. Because he knows that he can always go, well, I don't know what happened with Ray that night. And he'll cut it so that it's like me sitting down and going, fucking hell, what's your problem? And he goes, Um, I've not been offensive about women or anybody else for that matter. I've literally, I've been speaking to my pal over here. He asked me the question. Some we, can, were, uh, we can take it. Shut up. Some of them, <laughs> some of them were very offensive questions, but I understand what he's doing, so we played along with it. I took the tone of going, I'm not going to join in with all this sort of thing. I'll, I'll pretend really. that I'm bothered about it. And he said all the other things as well. I've not said one offensive thing, but I fucking can. <laughs> I can. We can do a and by the way, uh, by the way, by the way, you, 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 this is the important bit, the very important bit. You don't get a say in it. <laughs> you just don't. You can say it outside afterwards. But when the lights are on, I do enjoy the power. I fucking love it. <laughs> <laughs> fucking love it. Let's just do a little straw poll. Who, if you think Ray has been, <laughs> <laughs> has been sexist today, could you cheer now? So he's not, not even you. You've been sexy. I've asked sexy. 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 If you think Ray, if you think Ray has been sexy, can you cheer yeah. now? <laughs> I think it's just this, this isn't what I want to been talk some about. Cross, either. There's been some cross wires. That's all it is. Well, that's what can happen. She's got a bad. She's got a bad if voice. If you're not listening, that's what can happen. You can misunderstand. <laughs> if you're too busy chatting, and you're not actually listening to what's going on. I had a woman last night, um, and it doesn't matter that she's a woman, but she happened to be. Um, who got right in my face last night. Um, uh, they'd, they'd walked out of the gig, and I was around the side, and Joe Boar was on stage, right? They'd been horrible all night, been shouting out all night. And they walked out, and she got right in my face, and she went, all of you have been horrible to us tonight. <laughs> and I went, what, 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 what did we say? What did we say? And again, it was another thing she said. All we said was just stop talking when they had to on her. That's all, that's all we said. No, you were all racist. <laughs> right, and I went... When, well, I, was, I wasn't, I've not, I've not mentioned race all night at all. One of the acts had, yeah. it was kind of a clever joke way done, but he had mentioned race. And that act was next to me at that point. And she went, you were all racist. And I went, tell me what I said, like I did with that. I said, tell me, not that, as in that situation. <laughs> I, <laughs> with that minority there. <laughs> And I said, I said, tell me, tell me what we said that was racist. She, yeah. she went, I don't know what any of you said. I just know <laughs> that you were racist. I'm like, fucking out the door. Go, yeah. go. Well, history will judge this podcast. <laughs> <laughs> Only there was some evidence and of honestly, what you said no. and what you didn't say. We were, there's no way. Do you know what? People will know. Do you know what? Even, the even that though, out. even though I did it as a joke, <laughs> yeah. I'm fucking so glad I recorded this. <laughs> I've got, got fucking. I've got the full copy of it. I've got the full copy of it. I might even put it out before you do. <laughs> <laughs> Unedited. Unedited. <laughs> oh, God. Fuck me. Yeah. This fucking society. <laughs> Don't you despair, man. Uh, it's, well, you know, it is, it's an annoyance uh, for, for stand-up comedy. Not usually, I have to say, at 5.30 on a <laughs> Sunday afternoon. <laughs> It's usually quite all right. Usually well, it's when people get upset variant. about something they've half heard. And that happens in society, generally speaking, as well. Yeah. Something that, 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 it's a, it's that classic knee jerk. Knee -jerk. Well, what did you say about that? It's like, well, listen, you listen what I said. Yeah. No, there was nothing offensive in there at all. And it's like, and you just have that. It, it, it genuinely depresses me. Like, genuinely. De like, I, mean, I mean, real life depression. Yeah. It genuinely depresses me that I, we, people who go out onto a stage, Ha now have that to contend with on top of everything else. Like, it really does, to the point where I was just like, I'm not doing it anymore. Like, earlier this year, I was like, I'm not doing it anymore, I'm going to do a new podcast. I started doing things, uh, like, I went and did, I write for a rugby league magazine, because I love, uh, you know, I love rugby league. I set up the Parapod, because I love that, and I was like, I'm not, I just don't want to go out. 
in front of people anymore. I just don't enjoy it at all. Because mm-hmm. of things like that. Like, I, like genuinely is that. And, um, and, uh, and part of your things, well, then, then they've won. Then they've won, you know, they've, they've, they've got to you and they've made you stop. Um, but it, it, like, it, it had a, a genuine, real life um, damaging effect on me as a human being. Like mm-hmm. it did. I was, you know, I was going home and doing all sorts of things. And it was uh, uh, mainly because you feel like, uh, when we recorded the extra thing there before, yeah. around the back, and I said to you that you don't want to be, I don't mind people thinking I'm a cunt if I am one. But I do have an issue with it when people just decide you are. It, I mean, it genuinely feels like the equivalent of somebody thinking you're a paedophile when you're not. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's, yeah. like, it's that hurtful. It's that hurtful to you as, as a person. And it's that, um, and yeah, it, the last 18 months, uh, on top of lots of other things as well, that really started to, started to go in. Where I was saying earlier this year, I'm packing and doing gigs at Christmas. And, and next year, I've got very few gigs in, really, by choice. Um, but I don't think I've planned it necessarily correctly right. to cover it. But I've, I'm, I'm all right. I can survive for a bit without doing gigs. Yeah. Well, that'd be like a sh- Stuart Lee that time. <laughs> 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 It'd be a shame if that. I mean, I can un- completely understand it, and I understand that it's, um, you know, it. I think I think that the, the issue is people like uh, um, and much e- more likely to jump to be offended by things or want to be offended by things. Now. And I think that's partly down to social media. <laughs> And and so like in the, uh, within comedy it should be it. I don't think we. I mean I don't, I certainly don't think you said anything particularly bad. I think I genuinely think I've said some things that if you took them at face value would be awful. I but, I, but, I, I, but I want to be thinking in the back. Where I, thinking back, I think the worst thing I said was that Noel Edmonds was a cunt. Yeah. <laughs> is a, is a th- is a thing thinking yeah. back. Over, but I, I, may, I may be wrong. But I, I'm pretty sure that I've actually been quite. Uh, yeah. But quite you know, we, we've got a, the, what's nice about this podcast, I think, it's a sort of safe space to it's be not. able to. It's not. No, but, it's, <laughs> but it's sort of, you know, but it sort of has been. It has, it has escaped all of that because people who don't like me or don't like that kind of comedy won't generally come and listen to it or come and see it. So we can, we can carry yeah. on doing that. And the people who do, the, you know, because it's live, you take some risks and it comes out. Sometimes, come, and I don't think you know if, any, if anyone st- anything's come out wrong, it's come from this side. Of no, 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 no. But, that's but it a, has. You know, look, look, Richard, that's not what that we like. both know what's happened. Um, <laughs> but, but yeah, the, the problem with that, with with the podcast format and that, is it is freeing. It's very freeing. So when you do something like, so when you make it live, and I've done, we've done live podcasts. In fact, I, th- I believe I did live podcasts before you. <laughs> and. Um, <laughs> And uh, in here, but downstairs, in a much smaller room. Um, I, th- I think what happens then is people confuse it for a, uh, a rehearsed performance. So if, no, <laughs> someone, <laughs> someone went, rehearsed the, oh no, it wasn't saying it. <laughs> it was saying rehearsed, sorry, no, sorry, my bad, my bad, my bad, my bad. <laughs> Fucking amazing, amazing. Not a GCSE amongst them, your fans of the <laughs> Um I think uh, I, I, I think the the reason that we do it um, is because we don't want to be told at any point you can't say that you can't do that and if we were you know doing telly or, or radio or whatever you know commercial radio um, or BBC radio for that matter it, it, it'd be like no you can't you've got to say that differently you've got to say that differently it's like and I think you get to an age and I've certainly got to it and I know you're you soared past it. <laughs> uh, the, no, but I, I, I mean an age of maturity is what I actually mean. Is that you just go, I can't be asked with that. I yeah. can't be asked with into what I can and can't say. So I'm going to say what I want. I'll you know, live or die by it and I'll risk it. And I, I edit our podcast as well. So I, go, I might take that out, I might not. Depending on you know, what, whatever decency level you're working at on that day. Um, and the issue is, is when you bring that into real life yeah. is that... Um, I don't know, like in, in that situation that's just occurred that we all thoroughly enjoyed, <laughs> there, there's that feeling of where you just go, well, that's fine. Even if you're upset, that's fine. But do it at, after at the door yeah. or do it um, on social media if you want and you know, see how that goes. But to actually interrupt an, an actual show, like a show that's happening, to interrupt that show um, and to talk all the way through that show, when there's like people around you who are observing the rules of the theatre and who are being, you know, polite, uh, not just to us but to other, more importantly, to other paying customers, yeah. um, and to still think you're in the right, genuinely makes me want to slash my wrists. Like it really does. That that sort of person exists. It, it genuinely wants to make. It, I despair of it. I'm glad it's a minority, but I still despair of it that it even exists. Yeah, but I think it's you know. 
the, some drink has been taken, and that <laughs> and that changes people's perception. Well, clearly, you know, clearly, whatever's happened, <laughs> two people perceived this evening in a, in a different way than the other. I think you're still thinking about the badges, aren't you? No, <laughs> they put. I've got You've the. Got your quid got the <laughs> yeah, yeah. But you know, it's, um, inter it's interesting that two people can watch a performance that 150 people have watched, and I don't think any well, of the other well, and the other off, people would think the same as those two. People. It, well, it's not a performance for a kickoff. No. It's not a performance. No. It's, 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 it's a chat. Yeah. So really, in in the society we live in, with freedom of speech, you can never criticise anybody talking about anything ever. You just can't. You can't. We can discuss now whatever we want, whatever we want. That's absolutely fine. Now, mm -hmm. if it upsets you, it can upset. And it's not a cult, even though it feels like one of your badges. <laughs> but, you know. You, 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 <laughs> that's the scary bit. Uh, it's the only time they stop talking. It's going to be a bit. That's about it. Um, you can leave at any point. Yeah. So if you're not enjoying it, you can vote with your feet. You can just fuck off and go. Um, but it's like being sat in a cinema and shouting at a film. It's like, what, what are you doing? There's other people there who are enjoying yeah. it or are certainly engaged in it, even if they're not enjoying it or, you know. It, honestly, honestly. Yeah. I, I, like, I'm, I'm not exaggerating, and I won't do it. I could genuinely cry. I, like, well, I, I really could. I know, I, really I could. know, but you're, you're a very sensitive man, and, you know, your latest show is, uh, explores that. Your last show yeah. explored that in, in some detail. I don't necessarily want to talk about that right Let's now. Let's talk about it. It did well for Stephen Fry. We can do. <laughs> it did well for Stephen Fry. Uh, on time. You've got we got. Time. We have got time. I just don't want to start talking about it if we didn't have time. But so you talk about um, your depression in that show. Yeah, but it wasn't a show about depression. No, it like wasn't like come and see the sad boy. It wasn't like rent a sad. It was like it was about how I was acting in real life, and that that was an underlying thing that was going on, and that yeah. became apparent. And, and by the way, not a manipulative way, particularly. All shows are manipulative, but, <laughs> but you know what I mean? It wasn't, I didn't write it that way. No. It came out that way, and it, and it just sort of like, it became clear to me as I was talking about stuff and being a troublemaker and very funny, silly stories about things I was doing, that there was an underlying like mental illness, you know, that was, that, that was going on. And, um, and I became very, um, uh, very happy to display it, if that, if that makes sense. And not in a, I, I, I never want to be known as the sad comic or the, you know, the, oh, he's got depression or he's this, that, or the other, you know. Um, it was actually, it was impulsive nonconformity disorder is one of the things that was suggested it was, which I don't even know if that's a real thing, nice. um, which is that I can't, case in point, everything, and you tried to do it, it's like, just ignore it, <laughs> right? But I can't, because the, yeah. the thing to do in there is to... My girlfriend said to me, or wife said to me last night, <laughs> said to me as we were driving home last night after this ruckus at this gig, and I honestly said, and I was actually, I was genuinely um, emotionally upset, and I said, why is it always me? Why, why does this always happen to me? And she said to me, she said, it's actually, I think, very complimentary to you. And I said, why? And she said, the thing is, is you don't let people get away with it. So if someone's chatting in a gig, you call them on it. Or if someone's disrupting the audience, you call them on it. Whereas there's other comics who will go on and will just plough through their set and speak over it and speak louder over it and all that sort of thing. Um, and she said, that, that because of my, my sense of fairness that I have, that I have it in spades, this sense of fairness that I don't like anything unjust, I don't like anything that I feel like that would upset you know, more people, is that I can't, I, I actually can't let someone being rude Mm -hmm. get away with it, especially not when I've got a microphone in my hand, especially not then. Yeah. Um, because, you know, you, and it's not an ego thing, and it's not a chucking my weight around thing, it's, not, it's nothing like that at all. It's literally that I've been in cinemas when a light has gone up there, and you're like, well, they're on the fucking phone, and yeah. I'm watching a phone, where a light, and a light, and you're like, fuck, I'm what? But I've paid for a ticket as well. Yeah. And because I've been in that situation so many times, I've been angry at so many gigs. Because people just can't behave and just can't. It's it don't. It's not a long time, is it? You know, it's not a long time. So, uh, it, it's just that. It's just that. So, on the subject of the last show, it was clear that I wasn't well, and it was clear that year that I wasn't well, and I I perhaps shouldn't have gone to Edinburgh that year. Yeah. Um. Because I had uh, several attempts at that business, and I had. Uh, uh, my Twitter was a fucking minefield. It, like, I had like several, several people trying to wrestle my password off me at any given time, because I was tweeting all sorts of shit, yeah. you know, and, and never anything nasty, just all like weird clues. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, like, it was like quite bizarre, you know. Yeah. And, uh, and my manager was calling up and just giving it all this uh, 
we've had bookers ring up and they're worried about you, you know, they think you've gone mental. I'm like, I fucking have. Put the phone out, you know. And, uh, and, uh, and, and, and all see the, the problem with with when you get into a suicidal state, which I've been in my life. That's but it's not a new thing for me. That has, that's happened me, over many years. That has. But last year was a proper fucking potent time of it, and I and I can never explain it better than Fry did on this. You know, he, you know, he certainly was far more eloquent than me and swore less, and and it just. <laughs> but it's it, there's something. Have you been in that? Have you ever been in that situation? I mean, I don't think to the same extent. You know, but I think the thing is like Edinburgh, that Edinburgh was. You know, I had a very bad Edinburgh. Yeah, you did. Yeah, and, yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, it's really. But me and you were fighting. Yeah. Like yeah. me, like, like, but I wouldn't do that normally. No. So, and I was fucking like on Twitter saying yeah. about you having stickers over posts yeah, yeah. and shit. And you know, I was getting genuinely angry. Yeah. And that wouldn't bother me any other year. No. And me and you were like, I remember you ringing me, going, "It's, it's, it's a joke. It's a joke." I was like, "I know it's a joke, Rich, but fuck it." And yeah. that, that I was on that fucking level yeah, all yeah. the time. But I mean, it's so heightened in Edinburgh as well. So if you're in that. If you have a um, you know a fragile mental state on top of that, I mean, by the I was I was very unhappy. In that. Yeah, no, I know you were. So, but, but, but I don't I, think I mean I don't you know I had I have a lot of things that I have to stay alive for. So that I absolutely, know, but, but you uh, do but you do go through. They do say if you even go through a fleeting thought yeah. of I'm going to chuck myself off that bridge that you need to then look, you look, need to look at that. Okay, you know, well, and, I've and, definitely thought that. Yeah, so, Edinburgh. Edinburgh. Yeah, it's fucking <laughs> nothing but bridges. Um, <laughs> Um, but it, but it, by, by the time the fringe came round, I, I'd levelled in terms of that. Yeah. That was all out the way. There was one. There was one. There's only one funny one. Um, was that I'd, uh, I, what had happened was Ed Gamble had been to my house. What, so anyway, I was meant to be going to a concert with somebody, and then we fell out with each other, and we didn't go to the concert, and then that person then went to the concert. So on that, which really upset me, it bothered me that, that they still went to the concert. And that night, Ed came to my house because they were worried about me. And he sat with me, and I did brilliant acting. Brilliant acting, that was all right. Yeah. And he left, and, um, and I, was, I was living in this little shitty one-bedroom flat at the time, in Luton, and, uh, which is where I'd ended up for you know, various reasons. And um, it's weird that it was only last year. And uh, Ed went, and I'd heard about, you might have to cut this, I don't like, I don't like doing this in terms of, I don't like giving the, the method away. Um, I, I sort of semi knew someone who, who'd done away with themselves. Who uh, they'd done it by they'd, li they'd lit fire lighters in an enclosed space, which takes all the oxygen out of the room, fills it with carbon monoxide, and you go to sleep forever, right? I had some fire lighters at my house. Between having the idea and doing it was maybe 30 seconds. And I ran into the kitchen. I got these fire lighters from another sink. I lit them as I was running back to the bathroom, right? Chucked them in the sink, and then I was like, oh, sh I need towels. I need to block it all off otherwise it can get out. So I turned the light on, walked back into the bedroom, got some towels, went back into the bathroom, shut the door, put the towels on the floor, lay myself down, right? Fucking ready, that's me, ready for the off. I'm going, this'll get me on the front page of chore, all fuck the lot of them, right? I lay there in silence, or I thought it was silence. <laughs> this was the most I laughed last year, right? Because I, I became very aware that I could hear and I opened my eyes, and I realized that in my shitty new flat, when you turn the bathroom light on, <laughs> <right>? <laughs> it starts the extractor fan, yeah. right? Which then stays on for 25 minutes after you've turned it off. And I fucking, I lay there, laughing, like hysterical, going, I can't even do that right. And honestly, you couldn't have CGI'd it better. This fucking smoke just went, <laughs> It was incredible, incredible. So, um, but that was the only funny one. But it was, uh, uh, but even within that darkness, I'm still very impish and I'm still yeah. very mischievous. So very, uh, the, the moods change very, very fast. And I guess it's, it, it'd be the d definition of bipolar, really, on, yeah. on some levels. It'd be, you know, that you, you scoot from mood to mood. But I'm not sure I'm in the right job for that. Well, that like, I'm really know, not. <laughs> it, you might, it may not be, but you are very good at the job. That's the, you know, you're a very good stand-up. It's a shame if you want to give up stand-up, but if you have to give up stand-up for those reasons, then that's, it's not worth, you know, dying, uh, well, literally no, dying over. Well, but, but, there's, yeah, well, there's but, plenty of. Yeah, they, they, they have, um, but it's, but, you know, so it, it, you are, I mean, that's what, I mean, I think I was in, I was in a fairly good mental state last year and Edinburgh I thought worked. you were going to say before we started yeah, before <laughs> but Edinburgh, I was feeling alright yeah, earlier on but Edinburgh kind of you know took me you know I was I, like, I was I mean I was with Christian Christian Riley was in my show at the end and you know yeah. he'd be at the but you know, and, you know he'd be going we'd be just going oh this is so it's going so tough and then I'd walk through the curtains and then just do a really full I you know I'd really perform it for that hour but off stage I was just like 
you know, I but, don't but how, do But also, how exhausting is that? And that, and that was the other thing that happened in that film. The show was here called Here Comes Trouble, and from the poster, you would never guess <laughs> it was going to... Because I, I did yeah. start talking about all that business in the show as, as it went on, and you'd never guess from the poster it was going to be that sort of show. And I, I like to think it was a funny show, and it was very silly, and there was child, childish, and, you know, had the spirit of stuff that I'd done before in it, as well as a bit of maturity to it as well. And um, I... The, the thing I didn't take into account is that I was talking about very dark moments in my life on stage. And when I tell uh, stories on stage as a stand-up, because that's what I am, I've, I've not, never written a joke in my life, I'm a storyteller, you know, and, and when, I, when I tell stories, in my head, I, I go to that place, so it's, it's perhaps an acting thing as well, so I have an acting background, and you sort of like go through, it's a method thing, you go, th you go through it in your head where you were, and you can almost, even when you, you tell the audience, you can see the room and you can see you know, the situation. Um, and what I hadn't reckoned into that was that I was going to dark places every night. Mm -hmm. So at the Fringe, and I would, I'd never take a day off at the Fringe, you know, because of that sort of old school sort of thing, and I, want, I always want to do the whole run and the rest of it, except the last Monday. So you, you sort of, I was going to that dark place every night. So I found myself in the, the Fringe that year, slipping back into it and I mean I won't say, say I took solace from your misery <laughs> but, <laughs> but, but you know but there, there's a, there is a certain element of that yeah. in the fringe I don't mean you specifically I mean you do have that where you go you sort of look forward to people bumping into you and saying how oh, shit their night's been <laughs> you know what I mean so yeah. you, we, you don't feel like it is only you yeah. and I was, I was feeling very isolated so it was nice to hear other people having bad times nice yeah, inverted nice. commas and I just didn't um, I didn't reckon into it go into that dark place every night, how much that would affect me. And I was exhausted after that fringe. Mm. And I didn't really want to do the show again. And then I took it on tour, and it was far more bearable. So I made the show longer, so I could explain more about it. Uh, I, made, I put it into two halves, and, um, and it, was, it was far more at my own pace than rather than cramming it into an hour and trying to explain why you're suicide. You know, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, all yeah. those things. Yeah. Um, but again, I don't want to, uh, even though I volunteered that information, I also don't want to be that person. No. But I think it's. Well, you know, I think it might it might be important. <laughs> no, no, do you know, genuinely yeah, is, but for uh, for us sort of people, I think it genuinely might be important um, because we're we're quite good at talking to people, give or take. But we're quite good. <laughs> do you know what I mean? At, at talking to people and yeah. getting through to people on a level that maybe uh, other situations. We're, we're more likely to convert an audience than a fucking politician is any day of the week. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? I know, I'd say, and I think again, I think within the medium of podcasting as well, it's so intimate, and you know, I think that, I mean, and, and stand up is as well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think, you know, I think I, I did talk about this with uh, Louisa, I think, but you know, it's that I get a lot of emails from people who say, you know, I've been through this tough time, and yeah, and I'm sure you must as well. So, by talking about that, by talking about it, I think it's very important, but yeah. also, but I think a lot of people go through this Cer know, certainly, certainly, and and uh, with. With the Peacock and Gamble podcast, when me and I did the, the old Peacock and Gamble podcast, because I'd speak about, we used to call it Stephen Fry depression long before you did it, <laughs> and, and uh, when I talk about depression, but in a very you know frivolous way, I, I rarely talk about it like this. I, I'm normally like quite dismissive yeah. of it, really, and um, and uh, so we used to get, uh, and I still do when I do stand up. I don't know about Ed, but I, I guess he probably does. Uh, normally, single people. I don't mean, I mean like one person on their own. Yeah. Uh, waiting after a gig, and you, and I'd always like pick it a mile off. I'd be like fucking depressed, definitely, definitely. Someone who's who wants to talk about that, and you and you do, you're yeah. happy to, you know. There's no issue with that at all. And you chat with people and stuff, and they spare the soul to you and all the rest of it. But I had one that that fringe, uh, I had one that fringe where I told that story about the extracts fan and stuff, and then I came out after the gig, and there was a lad waiting for me, and I thought, yeah, definitely, definitely depression, all right. And I went over, he went. Um, I'm gonna ask you, uh, I really enjoyed the show. Can I ask you a question? I went, yeah, yeah, of course, man. Yeah, of course. He went, yeah, it's about the, um, about the suicide attempt thing. And I was like, yeah, check me out. Fucking <laughs> picked it, definitely. I went, yeah, yeah, of course. I thought, you know, he's been affected by it in some way in his real life. And I went, yeah, yeah, what's up? And he went, yeah, um, um, I was just wondering, um, why did you not just push your face in the smoke? <laughs> 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 Excuse me, yeah. Next time, next time, thanks. And I don't think he meant it like that, no. you know what I mean? It's like, he just, he got Asperger's on it. He go, this doesn't make sense. And I can say Asperger's because my, my missus is Asperger's. <laughs> well, um, unfortunately, uh, this series of uh, Raha Lester Park. Is this the end of the series? <laughs> no, it's not the end of the series. But Please we tell have, me it's the last one. Usually, I, usually, um, 
Uh, let's hope Richard Bacon's got something to top this with. Uh, <laughs> sorry, that, that wasn't a very good choice of words. Uh, but, um... <laughs> so, he has been offensive all night. <laughs> uh, we don't have uh, limitless time, because I'd love to talk to you for another hour about this. We could um, do that in real life. We will do. We'll yeah. go and talk about it. But um, these. Thanks to you two, the plan worked perfectly to get him angry. <laughs> get him you? angry. You look, at, look at the video. When I get that angry, my lip goes a little bit. Yeah. And if you look at the video, I can guarantee it without my lip will be twitching. <laughs> and that's where I'm at the fucking flash moment. Yeah. Where it could, and I've genuinely got to control it. I've genuinely not, not let loose. It would have been good for you, but not for me. <laughs> OK. OK. Uh, well, look, it's been great. I, I hope you will carry on doing stand-up unless, I won't. In, unless <laughs> it makes you really unhappy, in which case... No, but I'll do stuff. Yeah. I'll do like the podcasts uh, and stuff. Know, I'm, I'm writing books. I'm but your, show, your Edinburgh shows and your, with, uh, with Ed on, on your own are always my... I always go and see them, and they're always my favourite shows. So, uh, I should come and see you one day. You should do. I? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I feel quite bad about that now. Uh, yeah, um, it's same. Just, it's mainly just me sitting here, uh, sitting and letting someone else do all the talking. Uh, but uh, thank you very much. It's Ray Peacock, ladies and gentlemen. Good man. Thank you. We've got one more. Come again next week. Thank you. How do you like them sky potatoes? <laughs>